Down here, we do occasionally get brilliant sorority. And I think you've seen those too. They are the most beautiful manifestation of, of the link between the sun and the earth. When we have something like a coronal mass ejection happening, huge expulsions or big bubbles, actually, if you like, of plasma and magnetic fields are thrown away from the sun at thousands of kilometres a second. It produces radiation across the whole of the electromagnetic spectrum, right from radio waves up to gamma rays. And a huge number of charged particles from the sun, but also mixed in with magnetic field. And I think that's really the key point. And when these events hit the Earth's magnetic field, they can connect together, which allows the particles from the sun to come streaming down the Earth's magnetic field lines, crashing into the high atmosphere and giving up their energy. And in fact, the, it causes the gases in our atmosphere to glow a bit like a neon tube glows when you pass a current through it. And when we look at the colours, the different colours tell us um, what different elements are present in our atmosphere. So for example, the green and the red are emitted by oxygen, and the blue and the purple are, are emitted by nitrogen at different altitudes in the atmosphere. What heights are they? So the emissions are being um, produced at heights of about 90 kilometres or maybe up to 130 kilometres above the surface of the Earth. And actually when we look at them, they change over time and they move and they shimmer. And some of the emissions even form sheets or clouds um, or, or almost like vertical structures actually. And the vertical rays can really be seen well from space. Well, we're now nearly at the solar minimum, so we can't expect many aurorae, but we can't be sure. That's right. So even though there may not be many aurorae being produced at the moment, we never know when the sun's going to produce a really big storm that affects the Earth's magnetic field in a way to produce very intense aurorae. So aurorae are indeed lovely to see. Let's hope we have a good display in the not too distant future. Lucy, thank you very much. In this programme, we've discussed our sun in all its aspects. An ordinary star, but to us all important. And there it is in the sky, dominating the entire scene. But what about the sun seen from afar? Let's go ten light years out to the star Epsilon Eridani, which has got planets and may well have a planet inhabited by beings who can see us. From there, what would our sun look like? You see our sun shining as a second magnitude star in the constellation of Serpent the Serpent. I wonder, is there anyone there? Perhaps one day we'll know. Good night.